Well, hello, my fellow Americans and fellow Christians. Thank you for taking time to listen today. Friends, what we are facing is the vast majority of America is toxic and diminished in character. At a time when our world needs creative leadership and inventive minds, our thinking has shriveled into a prejudiced and fighting guerrilla war against each other, creating tension everywhere. Men and women are ceasing to compromise and are increasingly becoming socially belligerent. It is becoming more certain that every citizen in this country is going to encounter or witness some type of violence. We are becoming more insecure as people. No longer reconsider prejudice points of view. We are insisting on grasping our opinions or philosophy as absolute, and if anyone crosses that fine line, vengeful acts become the norm. Violence and murder, to be precise. We are encouraging our own philosophical suicide as a nation. Downright vengeful and murderous acts against friend, neighbor, society itself. Just of late, we have the Idaho murder of four students that gripped the nation for seven weeks by a Ph.D. student which baffles the mind. Uvalde by another youth massacring children without anyone reacting to Fice's sense of the value of life. In my observation, there is a massive problem with the, with the youth to the young adults in this nation concerning stealing and violent murderous crime. I was just talking to a teacher the other day, and she said she is no longer going to teach. That the students today are disrespectful and think society owes them a living. She said their behavior and conduct are frightening and volatile. The health of society will become more dark and vile unless there is a reversal of this epidemic with the youth of this country. We are seeing more acts of violent behavior and people flying off the handle in restaurants, airlines, schools, workplaces. What interests me is not the works or the mind or the criticism of this increasing dilemma, but the spiritual landscape that is no longer recognizable and the consequences it involves. Reread in Jeremiah. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, and like a man whom wine is overcome, because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing the land mourns. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is n not right. For both prophet and priest are profane, yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. This well defines our country today. The once pleasant places in America have been stained with the lost minds committed to destruction. How are we going to change the collision course of this dark and vile path America is on. We read in Proverbs 13, 13, He who despises the word will be destroyed, but he who fears the commandment will be rewarded. The first thing to this scripture is God will not be trifled with, and the despiser of his word will not escape. Our America resembles a rebellious in Noah's time. Noah, a preacher of righteousness, warned the people of the impending danger, offering a way of deliverance. 1 Peter 3.20 tells us about Noah's message of the long-suffering of God seeking their deliverance, but they heeded not. Noah's time must have made an impact on Peter, for he writes in 2 Peter 2.5, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Peter basically saying that they did not make the word of God their fear. The Holy Spirit is telling us 
There are consequences in rejecting and despising the word of the Lord. Warning us that ungodliness and wicked lifestyles will eventually bring catastrophe upon any people or nation, despising the word of the Lord. We read in Hebrews 12.25, See that you refuse not him that speaks. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape. If we turn away from him that speaks from heaven. For all those who think this does not apply to our time, the scripture makes it clear it is in present tense. When he says, much more, we shall not escape. To those rejecting the word of the Lord. The warning is for all time, but particularly our time, as we see a dark, ungodly country marching with no about face, not only as violence and murder on the daily news, but the theme of the most popular programs throughout America is violence, sex, and murder, the insatiable mindset of the country. The Lord says in Isaiah 66, 2, But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembles at my word. These are those who do not spies the word of the Lord, as a proverb tells us, that listening to the Lord's word and not trifling with it will reap the good and overshadowing power of God. For years I've been mentioning that televangelism and the evangelical trend of Christianity does not produce the fruits of the Spirit. It is a man-made gospel, a tickling ear gospel, designed to compromise the power of the Holy Ghost. It centers on self-gratification and encourages the ways of the world and believers to the point whether you can tell the difference. You cannot tell the difference between a Christian and a citizen of the world. Both participate in the same errors of life. Christianity is greatly to be blamed for the spiritual decline of the country. There is no longer the quest to be a new creature in Christ, no longer the quest for sanctification or the quest to be holy, no longer the quest to be imitators of Christ, no longer the quest for the Holy Ghost to be dominant in daily living. Instead, what Christianity has produced is a sterility towards Christian ethics, has pre produced a bold resistance in the spirit of to the Spirit of Christ by discouraging anyone to participate in the power of the Lord, which can change lives. The world has infiltrated the church. Christians today pop drugs, hand out drugs, go to bars and get drunk, smoke dope, commit crimes, murder, steal, covet their neighbor's wife, lie and backbite family and friends, curse using the F word in daily speech. Then go to church every Sunday, despising the commandments of the Lord. The reason they can attend is because there is no convicting power of the Holy Ghost turning them away from their sinful lifestyle. Instead, the false gospelists preach that you can do whatever you want and still be a Christian. St. Paul writes, set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of this obedience in the which you also walked some time when you lived in them but now you also put them off off all these anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy communication out of your mouth lie not one to another seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, 
Two important verses here. For which thing the sake, the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. Again, it is present tense for our time. The other verse, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. This tells us that if we are truly followers of Christ, we have put on the new man, the life that exemplifies Christ and his gospel. We are no longer captives of the world and its sinful ways, but captives and servants of Christ. The United States is experiencing extreme weather on a scale of historical events yearly. Hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, droughts, winter freezing, never seen before across an entire nation. Heat beyond what anyone ever dreamed is possible. Freezing and heat in places that was never thought possible. The devastation is appalling. We read in Jeremiah 23, But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. There is an ancient prophecy that says calamities are sent forth and shall not return until they come over the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out until it consumes the foundations of the earth. Just as an arrow is shot by a mighty archer, does not return. So the calamities that are sent upon the earth shall not return. Alas for me, alas for me, who will deliver me in those days? Famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for the correction of humankind. My friends, yet for all this, they will not turn from their iniquities or ever be mindful of the scourges. Indeed, provisions will be cheap upon the earth, and people imagine that there is peace, and it is assured them. And then calamity shall spring up on the earth, the sword, famine, and great confusion. This describes our time. If we are to see the United States as a city on a hill, a great and shining light, the nation needs to return unto the Lord, return to faith in God that can change the course of the nation. Put faith in Christ who prom promises the Holy Spirit to help guide us and change our sinful ways. For it is only by turning from our sinful ways to Christ the Lord shall the nation bear the fruit of the great hand of God upon it. The Lord's word is talking to us and telling us the importance of putting faith in him or the haphazards of life will continue to escalate and there just may be a time when it is too late to change. We read of the virgins without oil in their lamps in Matthew 25. The bridegroom arrived and they had no oil for the lamps. They went to buy oil for the lamps, but it was too late. My friends, America has an opportunity to return unto the Lord. To make this nation once again a great and shining light. His word is speaking to you today, and his hand is extended still. But let no one's testimony be too late, but a rejoicing that you have become a shining light in a darkened nation, calling upon Christ to fill your soul and to change your sinful ways. God bless you and God bless the United States of America.